Good morning. This is Pastor Tim Wells, pastor of Cross of Christ Lutheran Church in Aurora, Nebraska. Here we are, the final week of Advent leading up to Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, this Saturday and Sunday. And for our devotions, we are looking at the Christmas account as told in Luke chapter 2. And we started this off yesterday. Yesterday we read verses 1 through 7. And this was all about Joseph and Mary having to go to Bethlehem, then having the baby in a stable because there was no room in the inn. Now we pick up with verse 8. Today we're going to read verses 8 through 14. This is Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. So far, the Christmas account. Now there's a few things to talk about. First of all, shepherds. We'll talk more about the shepherds in tomorrow's reading. But shepherds, kind of seen as outcasts, they're not viewed in a positive light necessarily in society at this point in history. They're out in the fields. They're working with smelly animals. Uh, you don't really want them in the house with you, at least not unless they've had a nice shower, right? And uh, we don't have indoor plumbing yet. So not necessarily welcomed in town. And yet here we have the Savior has been born, and who are the first people to receive this good news? A bunch of shepherds. And they're watching their flock by night. And it says, an angel of the Lord appeared to them. The glory of the Lord shone around them. So what you have when you see an angel, this is often how this is described. You have someone most likely robed in white, and they are bright and shiny. Now, if a bright and shiny person appears to you in the middle of nowhere, how are you going to respond to that? Most likely, you'll be terrified. And that's the response of the shepherds. They were filled with fear. But then what does the angel say? What are the first words? And if you look at almost any visit from an angel, especially in the Christmas account, when an angel appears to Zechariah, when the angel appears to Mary when the angel appears to Joseph in the dream don't be afraid is often the opening words that the angel says fear not and God is saying through the angel I'm not here to hurt you I'm here to help you I'm here to love you I'm here to save you so don't be afraid I bring you good news of great joy don't be afraid, instead be filled with joy. I am here to save you. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And then we have a sign. I thought this was interesting because we've been talking about these Old Testament Christmas symbols for our Wednesday night Advent services. We're going to continue that series, conclude it uh, Christmas Eve. And so signs, symbols, same idea. And here the shepherds are given a sign. How do they know that this baby that they find is the promised Savior? He'll be wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Swaddling cloths, I had recently heard, were used to wrap sheep. So you would not normally have a baby wrapped in these particular kinds of cloths. This is the kind of stuff that you use to take care of livestock, not a baby. And he's going to be lying in a manger. That's not a cradle. 
That's a feeding trough for animals. Again, livestock care items. And so here we have the savior of the world, the king of the universe, being treated, if you will, as another piece of livestock. He's with the other animals in the stable. Why is that significant? Well, here we see Jesus living a fairly poor and lowly existence in his first day. And it's a reminder that Jesus came, not just for the wealthy, not for the rich and famous. Jesus came for all people. He came for the poor. He came for the lowly. We said this yesterday, right? He came for you. He came for me. Suddenly we have this huge host of angels, a multitude. And they proclaim glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. As we get closer and closer to Christmas, we thank God that through the gift of faith, we are those with whom God is pleased and we celebrate our Savior's birth. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, as we get ready to celebrate Christmas, help us to remember the reason we celebrate. Help us to remember your Son, our Savior, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the birth of our Savior, but not only his birth, but for his death and his resurrection. That through Jesus, our sins are forgiven. Through Jesus, we now have eternal life, destined to live with you forever. Lord, bless us all as we celebrate your Son's birth. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, we have some wild weather coming, it sounds like. So I pray that you all stay safe, stay warm. Pray God's blessings on your day. Hope to see you tomorrow. Amen.